Hi there, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to six player game, Paranormal Detectives, published by Lucky Duck Games, who helped sponsor this video. A dead body has been found, and the detectives called in to determine the cause of death are stumped. Thankfully, the ghost of the deceased found clever ways to communicate with them, and if they can piece these clues together, they'll solve the case. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the main board and quill pen sheet in the middle of the play area, and nearby put these hangman knots along with the ghost meter, wound, and talking board tokens. Now you'll pick one player who will take on the role of the ghost and have them collect these three ghost interaction cards which have this back, and the tarot cards which you'll shuffle into a face down deck, and these have this style of back. They'll also collect this ghost sheet and a pen. Every time you play, the ghost will randomly pick one of the 28 included scenarios which come from this deck, and I'm keeping them a secret because once a scenario has been played, it can't be repeated by the same group as they will know the secrets to the mystery. But I have a special way we can look at one of these without ruining anything for you, and we'll see that in just a moment. I just want to mention first that some stories will contain references to adult content, and if so, they're labeled with an advisory here in the top right hand corner if you want to make choices about which scenarios to use with certain players. For this video, the publisher provided me with a demo story, so nothing from the main box will be spoiled for you while we learn how to play here. But just remember, this is a card that I printed, so it's not as good as the quality of what comes in the game. With the ghost player set up, each other player takes the components for one of the detectives, which includes a detective screen showing their character and an investigation sheet and pen, which they'll keep behind their screen. You also collect the interaction cards that show your detective's picture in the upper left hand corner, but return to the box any of them that don't include the total player count for your game here in this bottom left hand corner, and that count includes your ghost player. I'm setting up a three player game in this video, so that's one ghost and two detectives. So none of these cards are discarded. But if we had a four player game, I would remove the one showing just two to three players. If you're playing a two player game, that is one with one detective and one ghost, you don't discard any cards, but instead have the detective take two full sets of interaction cards from any two detectives. The ghost player now reads the chosen story card to themselves so they know the story behind their own death. And then they place wound markers on the chalk outline of the board to match what is shown here in the story. This tells the detectives where the victim was wounded but doesn't necessarily indicate the nature of the wounds. The ghost also adds another wound to indicate the victim's apparent gender as shown here, either male or female. Then the ghost reads out loud the short description of their body's appearance as shown here at the bottom of the card. And that's the setup. In Paranormal Detectives, the ghost will be trying to help the detectives determine the answer to five questions. Who killed them? Where were they killed? How were they killed? Why were they killed? And what weapon was used? Though I should mention, don't assume that it was a murder of some kind. It could have been. But the game includes a variety of stories covering many different possibilities. It could have been something much more innocent. And the detectives will be trying to figure that out from clues that the ghost will give them. The game is sort of cooperative, but not entirely. The ghost wants to help all of the detectives equally, because at the end of the game, the ghost only wins if someone solves the case before time runs out. The detective who solves the case wins with the ghost and the other detectives lose. So each detective wants to solve the case as quickly as they can. But keep in mind, you've got five answers you need to come up with. So it will generally take a few turns before any of the detectives even start to have an idea of what went on. Now, if the case isn't solved by the end of the game, then the ghost loses and the detective who got closest to solving it wins. We'll see all of this in more detail later, but now let's talk about how the game is played. The detective player who most recently witnessed something scary is the first player and will take the first turn. Then play continues in clockwise order around and around the table, with each detective taking a turn until the game is over. The ghost doesn't have their own turn. Instead, their job will be to answer the questions asked by the detectives. And on a detective's turn, they'll complete two phases, starting with asking the ghost a question. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you how this works. 
Here, the current player will pick any one of the interaction cards from their hand and play it face up onto the table, and then ask out loud any question, so long as the answer couldn't be yes or no. You really can come up with any questions you like, though keep in mind, ultimately, you're trying to figure out the who, why, where, how, and weapon that caused the death. So you can ask very direct questions like, who killed you? Or something indirect like, what was the temperature when you died? The catch is that the ghost will have to answer your question in the method you've indicated on the interaction card you played. And there are nine different possible methods, so let's go back to the table and I'll show you how each of them work. If answering the question with the talking board, the ghost will make use of up to five of the numbered markers to spell out up to five of the first letters in a word. But they will not be pointing at specific letters, instead just to particular groups of three. Let's say for a moment as the ghost I've been asked what weapon I had been killed with. I might lay out my markers like this. Again, each of these markers is just referring to the three letters that it's pointing at. It'll be up to the players to unscramble and solve what this clue means. Aside from one of the interaction cards that we'll see later, all of the clues given by the ghost are given publicly. So everyone will hear the questions asked and see the answers given. And then, using their investigation sheet and pen, they can write down anything they like as they gather information. If a question is asked with the hangman's knots, the ghost will arrange the two pieces of rope in any combination of shapes and symbols, but they cannot make letters, words, or numbers. When using the Whisper of Shadows, the ghost communicates with a single word using their mouth, but they cannot make a sound. The Haunted Mirror also requires that the ghost remain silent, but they can act and gesture for up to three seconds. Next, we have the Ghost Scream, and here the ghost answers by making any kind of sound as long as it isn't a word, or they can instead point to an object in the room. When the answer is requested using the tarot cards, the ghost draws up to three of them from this deck. Then they arrange them on the table in any way they like and can even overlap or flip them over. This is the ghost meter, and when it's used, the ghost places up to three of the markers into three different scales, and these different positions will provide you with different possible measurements, like big or small, heavy or light, fast or slow, evil or good, loud or silent, hot or cold, old or young, and this one here can be used to identify a color. So if the ghost did something like this, they are indicating something that is quite small, isn't really good or bad, and is red colored. This is the quill interaction card where the detective holds a pen while the ghost holds their wrist and moves their hand to draw the answer on the sheet. Now the line must be continuous, and once the pen lifts intentionally or by accident, the drawing stops. When giving your answer, the ghost can use shapes and symbols, but not words, letters, or numbers. And now, finally, we come to the ghost touch. Here, the ghost will draw the answer with their finger on the detective's back. And once again, they can draw anything but words, letters, and numbers. And this is the one clue that is only given to the detective who used the card. No one else gets to see it. Now that we understand how the clues are given, once the detective has asked a question and the ghost has answered, all detectives can make notes on their sheets, as we saw earlier, and then the interaction card that was used is removed from play. After getting their answer, the current player may then try to guess at explaining the story behind the ghost's death, but this is optional. If they do decide to guess, though, they'll explain out loud what they believe are the answers to each of the five questions. The ghost will have keywords for each of the five questions that they'll be listening for. It's not necessary for the detective to fully detail all of this information, just to say the words here, or to use a word that is clearly very similar to one of the keywords. For example, in the case of why, fear or self-defense is the answer, but panic or scared would also be acceptable. As a reminder, let's go through the five different questions and the kinds of answers you should expect. When answering for who, Remember, this is not necessarily a murderer. It might be someone whose actions just led to the victim's death. It could even be the victim who did it to themselves. The answer will usually be an occupation or a relation to the victim, like uh, an uncle, professor, or bus driver. For the question of where the death occurred, this is a place or location. For example, a hotel room, an office, or a laboratory. 
When answering why, you're looking for the motive or reason that the killer's actions led to the ghost's death. Maybe it was revenge, deaths, or jealousy. How will refer to the method or action that was the direct cause of the victim's death. Maybe it was drowning or being stabbed. And finally, with the weapon, we want to know what object or tool specifically caused the death. Sharp glass, poison, fire, and so on. After a player makes their guess, there are two possibilities. Either they got every keyword correct and solved the mystery, winning the game along with the ghost, or they were not completely correct. In that case, the ghost privately takes their sheet and marks a number somewhere for them to secretly see how many of their guesses were correct, so a number anywhere from zero to four. They don't indicate which guesses were right, just how many. This sheet is kept secret from the detectives, but the ghost also marks that number in the leftmost empty column within the row of that detective's portrait. Now, remember to mark the value in the leftmost empty column. For example, if later this player made a guess and got three answers correct, we would mark the three in their row, but in this column, as the one here already has a number. And we'll see why this is important a little bit later. After someone makes a guess that does not fully solve the mystery, the ghost now gets to provide a bonus clue. They pick any one of the three ghost interaction cards they have in order to give a clue to all of the players. Now, the detectives aren't asking a question, and they won't know which question the clue might be for, but hopefully the ghost will find a clever way to provide some additional helpful information, and then the interaction card that they used is discarded. Now, since the ghost only has three of these cards, it means that there will be only three bonus clues given like this during the game. One after each of the first three guesses made by the detectives. After a player has asked a question and then made a guess or not, the next player in clockwise order takes their turn. Now, you'll notice I said that on your turn after asking a question and getting an answer, you may try to guess at the story. But that might have you wondering, why wouldn't you always guess after every question? Well, here's the catch. Each detective may only try to guess the answer to the story twice during the game. After your second attempt, if you haven't won, you're removed from the investigation while the other players continue. Now, you can still win, but you're done taking turns. The game will continue with players taking turns until either a detective guesses all the correct keywords in the story, winning the game with the ghost, or it will continue until all the detectives have run out of interaction cards or have all used up their two attempts to guess the story. If that happens, you instead reveal the score sheet and the detective who correctly guessed the most correct keywords is the sole winner of the game. And in the case of a tie, the tied player who guessed the most keywords first, that is, in the earliest column, they're the winner. The game also comes with this fully cooperative variant, where all the detectives are working together to solve the case, sharing their thoughts and ideas with each other. The only difference is that they will only have a total of two attempts to guess the story as a group. They will then earn a score based on how many interaction cards that they used. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Paranormal Detectives. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.